Well, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden will be making her third visit to New Jersey today to make an education announcement. Yeah, Bergen County Community College in Paramus rolling out the red carpet for the First Lady and the Secretary of Education. Governor Phil Murphy joining us this morning to preview that visit and what it will mean for schools in New Jersey. Governor Murphy, this is your first appearance in the new year, so good to see you and happy 2022. Good to see both of you. Thanks for having me back. Uh, Governor, so let's begin with this big uh, appearance today over in, in uh, Bergen County. Education Secretary Miguel Cardona, right, announcing $122 billion, Governor, in federal funding to help schools remain open during the pandemic. So important here. So are schools in New Jersey slated to get some of that money and how much? Yeah, so today specifically we'll be at Bergen County Community College talking about <clears throat> some of the student support money that the Biden administration is putting on the street. Mm -hmm. Critically important, things like childcare uh, on campus for uh, working parents, mental health uh, monies, um, monies to pay down the balance of outstanding uh, tuition to keep uh, folks in school. So it's a really exciting day to have the first lady back, the secretary back. Uh, and yes, uh, there, there is money at all levels of education. Good. Uh, desperately needed, I might add, to whether it's mental health, whether it's uh, learning loss, whether it's in, it, hard infrastructure investments in our schools. We need it and we welcome the support from the Biden administration. And an exciting day for you yesterday as well. Tuesday marked the beginning of your historic second term in office. A belated congratulations to you. And, and during your inaugural you. speech, uh, you discussed expanding pre-K education. What exactly is that going to look like? And I'm sure uh, your constituents are wondering how much that's going to cost. Yeah, well, we've been to the contrary in terms of cost. The state is picking that up, which is relief for local property taxpayers. That's money that they don't have to put on the street to expand pre-K or to fully fund public education. Uh, but we've we've been expanding it since day one in office, and we have an objective to get to universal pre-K. Uh, over the next number of years. It's a game changer, mm -hmm. as we all know. Mm -hmm. you know. The money you put into a, a young uh, person's education up front pays dividends uh, throughout their entire life. Yeah. And we, we, we want to hold ourselves up as a national model, and we're on a great journey. Uh, and any federal help there, by the way, accelerates the plans that we already have in place. Yeah, and all of this topic of, of conversation surrounding education comes as we are, of course, talking about schools staying open during COVID, right? And you issued new COVID orders yesterday, Governor, requiring all health care workers to be fully vaccinated and then get their booster shots. And if they don't, they actually face termination, right? So, so I guess the question for, for many is why do it now when the numbers are on the decline, which is a, which is a great thing, by the way, that we're seeing? Well, it's, it's really being done, Dan, because the U.S. Supreme Court upheld the Biden administration's uh, mandate for health care workers. So we're just coming in. It's inevitable now. Yeah. The only thing we've done in health care settings is to add the booster shot as a requirement because we know the regular vaccination course wanes over time. And then we've added the congregate living uh, uh, facilities, whether it's corrections, whether it's adult uh, disability homes, whatever it might be, where we know there are vulnerable communities to this virus. So we've really taken our cue from where the U.S. Supreme Court uh, landed last week. But are you doing away with the optional testing for those health care workers? I'm, so are you I'm do sorry, doing away? Are you doing away with the testing option for those health care workers? We are. And, but, but that's also the Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme yeah. Court's um, a conclusion as well. And we're going to do this in a responsible way over right. a number of weeks here. We're not going to, it's, you're not going to wake up tomorrow morning mm -hmm. and find that this is the reality, but we're going to phase this in in a responsible way. Uh, and, uh, and again, I, I, if it's the right thing to do, particularly in healthcare settings, whether it's a hospital or long term care, uh, we know folks are vulnerable in those mm -hmm. settings, and this, God willing, will make us even healthier. You know, Governor, I had, um, had your health commissioner, Judy Persichilli, on my Sunday morning show, and we discussed the, uh, the topic of masks, what kind of masks to wear. Do you foresee sometime in 2022, because it is a great sign that the numbers are going down, they're still high, but they are trending down, that we might see no masks in a school setting within sometime this school year? Yes, I think there's a real shot of that. Um, I, I really do. Um, so fingers crossed. Uh, I don't mean this calendar year. You're, you're speaking about the school year that ends in June. I think there's a real shot of that. 
we're early days in terms of turning the corner, but it certainly looks like we've begun to turn the corner here. God willing, yeah. we keep that progress up. Hopefully we get some weather that's more <laughs> hospitable. We can live yeah. a little bit more of our lives outside, right. uh, but I do foresee there's a real shot at that. Governor, we also want to touch on something you spoke about yesterday, uh, your support of the marijuana industry in New Jersey. You know, 70 percent of municipalities across the state, they're, they're opting out of the cannabis industry. And how do you feel about that? It's like you're facing an uphill battle with that. Yeah, the good news about New Jersey is we're the ultimate home rule state. So if 70 percent of our communities opt out, there are still at least 150 other communities in the state, right. up and down the state, that are open-minded to or supportive. Listen, I got to the supporting this way back on the basis of social justice. That equity has been at the very center of uh, our support and how we will build this industry out in New Jersey, which will finally take root this year. Um, and that will always be a focus of ours. Yeah. Um, I, it's going to be, and it already has become, uh, when you look at expungements and other steps that have already been taken, it's going to be a game changer, <clears throat> excuse me, in the lives of many. And, and will this, Governor, some of the money that you make from the cannabis industry, because I listened to your, your speech yesterday and, and really talking about some of the tax taxes in, in New Jersey, and you know, so many people want those taxes to be cut <laughs> in terms of property taxes. Will some of the cannabis industry help lower those property taxes and make New Jersey more affordable? And will we see that happen within the next year or two? Yeah, I think it'll start off as a fairly low revenue source for the state. But it should build into a multi-hundred million dollar source of revenue. Um, I think our prime focus, Dan, is going to be, as we've committed to, is taking the, the, those monies either directly or indirectly and putting them back into the communities that have been ravaged by mm -hmm. the war on drugs, which are overwhelmingly black and brown communities. As a more general matter, um, I'm proud to say that we've got our first four years are four of the lowest ever in terms of property tax increases, we've delivered 14 tax cuts to the middle class and seniors, but we need to do more. Right. We want to not just have small increases, we want them to go down and we're committed to that. Now, you know, Governor, uh, some political pundits say that your inaugural speech sounded kind of like uh, you might be heading towards a possible run for the presidency, even though you've said in the past that you weren't headed in that direction. Any chance you might have changed your mind? I know you love the pundits. <laughs> no. <laughs> no change of mind. I think the point, you know, we, we too infrequently talk about what it is to be a patriot, what it is to live the American dream, what it is to have an opportunity state. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to put a fine point on all three of those themes uh, in my remarks a couple of days ago. A little bit of a source of Jersey pride. We're never going to be patting ourselves on the back yeah. uh, saying job well done because we still have a, a long ways to go to to get to our objectives. But um, a, a lot of the things we've been doing, I think, uh, are, are models that folks can look to, and we're proud of it, and we want to make sure we, we underscore them. All very good. Governor, we appreciate you being here. And it was a big day for you on the day of your inauguration. And at the same time, you know I always end with the toughest question <laughs> of all, Governor. And that would be, did you see Jeopardy the other night? And, <laughs> and did... <laughs> I, I, did, I did not, but my phone was flooded with texts. I never knew I had so many friends who watched Jeopardy. You said you'd like to buzz in, Governor. I mean, this was the, it was the, the biggest clue of $1,000 here. <laughs> Since Brendan Byrne in 1975, the first Democrat reelected, I mean, I'm sure you would have buzzed in with the correct answer. Did you happen to see the rest of the questions in that category? I did not. I only, I only heard about that one. I'm sure you would have swept. I swept the category. You know me. I got Jersey pride, Governor. All right, we got to get that guy I on. Love that. You got to meet. You got to meet that. All three of those contestants and say, "Hey, by the way, I'm Governor Phil Murphy." Good to have you back. <laughs> Great to be with you, Dan I, and Hazel. Thanks for having me. Thanks for All your right. time. There you go.